Hello friends and welcome back to another VGC 2020 Battle Series episode. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode we're going to be featuring a team from a very good friend of mine and top VGC player, Shade, you might also know him as Kunal. Um, he's passed me over this team because we were talking about the Primarina Disclops and Ferrothorn core. Very strong core and a prominent core that you're probably going to see quite often at the minute. Um, I did feature it, it was included in my GMAX Colossal team that we just featured last week on our showdown episode um, but we wanted something a little bit different and he kindly passed this over to me to use and um, just going forward though if you guys have teams that you would like to see me feature in this series on these episodes do leave them down in the comment section below leave a poker paste or anything that you would like just even a single pokemon with ev spreads and a move set that you'd like to see featured i'm more than happy to do that we've got new rules starting this friday the first of may so season four series four starts we've got the new g max pokemon Pokemon introduced Machamp, Gengar and Garbodor so we'll have a lot of fun with those Pokemon when they do get introduced. I've got some really cool ideas for Machamp so looking forward to trying a super fun crit team. But without further ado my friends let's hop into this and get underway. So rating's not great, rating's not too bad. We've not really been concentrating too much on laddering this series. I, I think I've been put off a little bit by... Um, the disconnect rates that you you kind of see in some players uh, having issues with. Um, other than that, I've obviously been working still, so I've not had a massive amount of time that I would have liked to. But um, hopefully next week I will be starting streaming again. Tuesdays, Thursdays over on Twitch. That will be every week, so come over there. We'll be playing VGC every Tuesday evening and Thursday evening, so do come by. It'll be great to see you and hang out and play some Pokemon. Um, I've got a first opponent playing a team of Excadrill, Tyranitar, Bravery, the Incineroar, Rotomwash, and Clefairy. So Clefairy, another really strong redirection Pokemon that you're seeing quite a lot at the minute. Obviously, with that friend guard, boosts the defensive capabilities of its partnering Pokemon. Um... So we've got the sand call, we've got speed control with the, the bravery, we've got a kind of a trick room check in the Clefairy potentially because it can get access to after you, um, helping out its partner Pokemon in the slow situations. Uh, the Intimidate, fake out support from the Incineroar and then the Rotom I'd say, hmm, what are we going to do here? Primarina is like really good if we can just kind of keep check on the Rotom, honestly. Um, I think what we'll do is I will go for uh, Arcanine. Uh, kind of put off leading Arcanine, honestly, because I just don't want to proc. Let's go Primarina, Mimikyu, Ferrothorn, and let's chuck the T-Tar in there. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Like, t is pretty decent against most things on this team that aren't Dynamax Rotom and the Excadrill, so... Um, nice thing about really kind of approaching Clefairy is you, because of the redirection, it's a, a little bit like how you approach Togekiss on any other redirection. You kind of want to be able to uh, kind of put spread moves on the field as soon as possible to kind of get around the redirection. You've got lots of options in this team. Obviously, Heat Wave on Arcanine, Hyper Voice here with Primarine, and the Rock Slide with the, the Tyranitar. Okay, so... Do we just max? The thing is that the worrying thing, like what we could potentially do is hide, max guys are into the bravery and go for a trick room. Because um, that should get rid of the bird. Unless it does max itself, but I don't really see it maxing. I see something more like Tyranitar maxing here. It's likely that it's got the weakness policy. That's like this kind of standard that you're seeing on Tyranitar. Maybe that will shift as the uh, the weeks go on, but the bird, the bird is the Dynamax. Okay, so we've got Max Espy, probably what we're looking at. So, uh, I don't mind this too much, to be honest, especially if we get a trick room up, which we're likely to do. Um, it's unlikely that my opponent's got a way to actually knock Mimikyu out. Um, they can definitely break the disguise, but Titos, especially not Max, not going to be capable of taking down the Mimikyu in the thought. But we'll be able to see our lady, our lovely lady Primarina in action here. I love Primarina. It's such a great Pokemon. Very strong Pokemon as well in VGC at the moment. Uh, so we're going to see the Airstream, which is fine. Uh, it does 
a decent chunk of damage um, boosting the speed but that just helps us out like way more because of our trick room oh no way taunt Tita okay well that kind of scuppers our plans a little bit I ran ta taunt Tita 2014 <laughs> no don't like this. All right. Um, I think we're going to have to. At least Mimikyu still got its disguise, right? Uh, right. Do we get rid of the bird now or do we get rid of the T-Tar? Hmm. Because so we'll take another Airstream. It's kind of tempting to get rid of the T-Tar, to be honest. Like, and then get Dusclops onto the field. Uh, oh, we haven't got Dusclops, have we? We need to, we need to do something. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Let's get a terrain in effect on the bird. I haven't brought Dusclops. It would have been a great Pokemon to bring here. Um, let's bring in Ferrothorn because we're gonna need to reset. If we want to go down a Trick Room route, we're gonna have to reset this Taunt. Um, Ferrothorn's likely to. It's gonna take an Airstream here. No? Okay. Oh. I don't know if we're going to be able to take an attack from the T-Tar. That's the problem. Uh, maybe we being better off going max guard. But we avoid. It's fine. It's fine. Fine. What are we worried about? Dodging these rock slides like a ninja. Okay. Oh, we'll get rid of the bird. I guess the problem is... Really, um... We can't get a trick room set up until the t is removed from the field. Um, but it will depend on... At least we've got the rain up, which helps support the Ferrothorn a little bit now. Our body press should take the Tyranitar down. Okay. So we get a little bit fortunate there. Like, a lot fortunate there. Rockside Mist. We would have been probably better off uh, max guarding and then attacking with a Mimikyu into the, the bird. But I don't know if we would have been able to take it down. That's the problem there. Tauntita. Tauntita. Very good. Very good. Okay. Incineroar coming in. Does have access to that fake out, of course. Uh, Primarina is in a, a terrible position right now. Um, I'm kind of tempted to honestly switch into Mim... Mm. Switch into Mimikyu here. And go body press. Because we could potentially see a fake out superpower into the Ferrothorn, but it's more likely we'd probably see fake out and rock slide to get rid of the Primarina. But I, that, I think they have to fake out the Ferrothorn here. Yeah. If you see the superpower, that's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's a rock slide, we thought. We will lose our disguise. Um, but to be honest, this is probably better than losing Mimi, uh, the Primarina. And I know it's so low health at the minute, and you think, ah, maybe it was worth keeping it. But if we can get our Trick Room up, it's going to be it's gonna be decent against the majority of what my opponent's got. Right. Are we faster than Tyranitar? I don't know if Mimikyu is. Potentially is, you know. If it's not like we could kind of taunt it before it taunts us. Um and then switch into our own T-Tel. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try and, and see. It's gonna mean like if we are slower, then it's gonna mean we're gonna have to adjust our board again. But I think we've got the Pokemon to be able to do this. Uh, if we can taunt the T-Tel, then we can potentially get rid of the Incineroar with our own T-Tar and then get uh, our Ferrothorn in a, a really strong position under the Trick Room to start doing some some work. Okay, so what are we going to see? Uh, Rotom. Okay. Mm. The Taunt's not so bad into the Rotom, actually, because it does prevent um, the Nasty Plot, and that's something that we don't really want to be having to worry about too much, so I don't mind the Taunt going into that slot at all. Uh, we'll probably see a Flare Blitz from the Incineroar into a uh, Tyranitar. Oh, a Taunt. Everything's got Taunt. <laughs> this guy just doesn't want anything to get set up. Right, well, huh. 
Uh, I think we can just start chucking out some rock slides, to be honest, with our Tyranitar. Uh, with Rotom, if they want to go Hydro Pump into us, that's fair enough. And we could potentially double up into the Rotom. I think that's what we'll do. Like, our main objective here, if we get rid of the Incineroar, just Ferrothorn wins this match. Like, that's our clear win condition. So that's the thing we've got to be trying to aim for. Um, if the Incineroar switches out here and Titar comes in, it's going to take some decent damage with the Rock Slide. And the main thing is we're not going to be proccing a weakness policy. Uh, if we see the Titar on the other side where the Rotom is, then it comes in and takes a player rough. Um, which can do some... I don't expect it to pick up a knockout, but it's going to put it in a, in, a, in a dangerous range, you know. So actually the fastest thing on the field, the Rotom's pretty slow. Okay, Hydro Pump. No! <laughs> Come on! We needed that to hit. We needed it to hit. Ah, uh, and then everything would have been gone. So unfair. When you want, <laughs> when you want Hydro Pump to hit, there's odd occasions. Okay, a point. Oh well, we get the flinch on the. We're getting some serious rolls here, to be honest. Um. Uh, right. Well, I think we're pretty safe from wrapping this one up. Like the Incineroar's got a hard switch out here, I think. Um, but if it does, that's the thing. Like the, the Rotom is risking proccing our weakness policy because the, with the stand up, the uh, the Hydro Pump isn't going to be taking down our Atar at Let's See, okay, play rough. You connect. And we actually pick up the knockout. Okay, with a crit. Okay. <sighs> RNG has been my friend today. Yeah, I feel kind of bad for this guy, but I think, well, this is the thing. It happens, doesn't it? We have to accept it when it's against us and then reap the rewards and enjoy it when it goes for us. You know, sometimes it happens like that. Um, but we definitely had a clear game plan in mind. So put aside the RNG there for a minute. I think we would have been all right anyway. Um, uh, we don't really need to around too much we can just super power play rough and that should lock this game up no need for ferrothorn but it was there that's what counts rocker weakness polyp there we go okay um the nice thing is that mimikyu is actually faster than tyranitar now we know and the next player rough will be able to pick up the knockout um but our tito is also faster than there so just makes cleaning this one up that little bit easier, but very good game to my opponent. Um, like I say, we got a few of the favorable roles there, but we'll we'll take those. Um, but the team feels super nice, um, and I think just generally it's a, it's a very good meta team at the minute that we've got from Shade. So it's just it's nice to showcase these teams as well, just show the different options, and that's a thing. Like this with these Pokemon as well, you don't need to run in a specific direction. There's so many different options you can run with this sort of team, with these sort of cores as well at the moment. Right, we've got our next opponent, number 265. So he's pretty high on the ladder, and um, playing a team of Dragapult, Togekiss, Dusclops, Milotic. Incineroar and Ferrothorn. So, um, kind of a similar call to what we're running, but with the Melotic over the Primarina. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of of Melotic. I, I I know exactly why it's good, and it's amazing competitively, but it doesn't mean I like it. And probably a lot of you don't like it, but probably a lot of you love it as well. Um, I prefer Primarina. But on to this match. Not onto my opinion. Uh, Mimikyu. Mimikyu's like pretty good here. Just shutting down things that could potentially set up. Uh, the yawn, the hypnosis, the coil stuff. Um, so Mimikyu also threatens the Dragapult as well, which is quite nice. Um, could have got Tyranitar maybe. Hmm. There is the, the worry about the Incineroar, of course. I think we probably need Arcanine just to check the the Ferrothorn. Like if I'm completely honest, I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that there. Um, and then Prim, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. A big concern is going to be the Milotic. Um, 
because we don't want to start giving it free competitive boosts with our Arcanine. So we've got to be super careful. And I guess that's why, again, like that combination of Melotic, Ferrothorn works really well because you're looking at probably the two more popular fire types in the format, Incineroar and Arcanine, both carry Intimidate. So it's like the perfect partner for Ferrothorn, really, isn't it? Um, we do see the Melotic come out with the, the Dusclops. Now, where do I go? Okay, we're going to see Lumberry and the Policy. Um, I mean, I'm going to taunt the Melotic. I'm more, I'm more concerned about that setting up coils, hypnosis, all that sort of stuff, than I am worried about um, a burn from the Dusclops or Trick Room going up, to be honest. Uh, now, do we max or do we just maybe buy that time a little bit and get some damage on the board? I could crunch the Melotic, but then we could potentially drop its its defense and boost its competitive. So I don't really want to do that. We could just go for a Trick Room and just kind of hope we maybe get a flinch onto the Dusclops, get some chip damage onto the Melotic, but it is switching out. So we're going to see the Ferrothorn come in here, which is fine. Um, we also land a Taunt onto the Ferrothorn, which stops it Iron Defensing, which is pretty nice. We do get an Intimidate onto both of our physical attackers here um you know the leech seed and the iron defense are the the things that you want to be able to kind of stop on Ferrothorn like straight away um the intimidate's not ideal for tyranitar but it does give us an opportunity to potentially switch into arcanine now and because everything on my opponent's side of the field is slower than our tyranitar um we are going to get it in before the melotic can come back onto the field thankfully which is which is a huge thing for us um but at the same time, we're going to have to worry about getting... Um, it's maybe worth going for the double switch here, to be honest. Uh, we'll bring in Arcanine on our Mimikyu slot, and we'll bring, in, we'll bring in Prim on our Tyranitar. Because if the Ferrothorn stays in here, it's likely to go body press into the Tyranitar. So we're going to kind of try and soak that up as best as possible, really. Um... I'm just trying to figure out now what the best game plan is. And we know the six Pokemon, my opponent. It's, it's how we tackle the Melotic. Um, like Tyranitar's max moves aren't ideal. Uh, there's a parting shot. We'll get into Primarina. We're going to see the, the Melo come back in for sure. Um, hopefully we don't see Power Whip from the Ferrothorn into the Tyranitar. That's... Something I kind of forget about because it's like the body press is so prominent at the minute you kind of forget that it does have access to these super strong grass type attacks as well. Um, that wouldn't be ideal for Prim Primarina at all. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to hit the field once again. Uh, it's just a body press. Okay, so that's, that's fair. Now. You've got to suspect that the Ferrothorn switches out here. Like, has to. Has to. Now, we could safeguard. Switch back into T-Tar. Expecting the Incineroar to come back onto the field or the Mimikyu. Hmm. We could Heat Wave. Like, we could Max and Heat Wave, but... Probably not going to do is too much good. I'm going to safeguard. Now, we could max here and go max Geyser into the Ferrothorn slot. It's not going to be... It's so risky, though. That's the thing, like... Um, I think we'll go for Starfall into the Melotic. We'll max. We'll go Starfall. I know we are minus one special attack here. But I feel at this stage I need to start getting damage onto this Melotic. Potentially the next turn we can get Arcanine off the field. Because like Arcanines are the key to beating that Ferrothorn. Like you just don't want to even entertain losing it right now. Because if we do our chances of beating the Ferrothorn are pretty slim. But like then we're relying on like superpower from Tyranitar, which we can't even max now. So we get the safeguard, so we don't need to worry about the hypnosis, at least for the next five turns. Any water? Okay. What can I just take that? Should proc the Aguav Berry. Okay. 
the max star form. I mean, we're kind of doubling up with our terrain and our safeguard. I guess we could have. We we probably should have went for the uh, the max geyser there into the incinero. Like honestly, um, because we're going after the the Malotic. So Arcanine wasn't really in too much danger. It's just that I guess I was kind of hesitant because maybe the Malotic maxed and went into the Arcanine. Okay, well, we'll get Mimikyu onto the field now. Um, and we'll go for that Max Geyser into the Incineroar. It'd be interesting to see if it actually sticks around. I can't imagine it staying around on the field. Okay, Malotic going to switch out. Ah, it's coming in. Ferrothorn again. We're actually going to be able to... Okay, no one else. No, no, no. Mm. Is it going to be the Tyranitar? Potentially. No. What am I talking about Tyranitar for? They are... Mm. No, they are Dusclops. Okay. I mean, we'll get some decent damage into the Dusclops. Okay, now I think we've got to taunt the Dusclops. We want to stop the Trick Room going up right now. Um, I'm just going to Max Geyser again into the Dusclops. And potentially get it in KO range for the next turn. Because then you expect it has to switch out for the Melotic there. After this, otherwise it goes down. Yeah. The Ferrothorn, what are you going to do? Leech Seeds? Yeah, makes sense. I mean, the one problem with the Ferrothorn, when you look at like that standard Leech Seed Iron Defense body press set, is it doesn't really have very many ways of hitting things like Primarina for super effective damage, so you don't need to be as scared to sit in front of it as you may otherwise be. Um, okay. So I think we are going to see Melotic come in here. Um, so I'm just going to Hyper Voice and play Rough that slot. We could double it with the Okay. Okay, so we don't see it coming. I'm just going to let their Dusclops go down. Which is fair enough. Like, the Melotic's definitely the one thing that we need to be able to, to handle now. Body press into Prim. Okay. Just get an extra damage onto it. I guess it's the one check that we got for it in Incineral. Well, it's not really, though. We got Tyranitar as well. But as long as they got Melotic out on the field, it kind of pins us with uh, being able to bring in Arcanine. Yeah, so Melotic coming back in. Um, let's taunt the Ferrothorn. Do we switch here? I don't think we do. Um, it might be better if we just try and get some damage. I mean, we could Hydro Cannon. Not going to be really getting the most out of better off going Moonblast. Because I'm scared of dropping it, yeah, like procking a... Let's just go Hydro Cannon. Like, we're going to lose Primarina this turn anyway. I'll try and taunt the Ferrothorn. Okay, well... Hmm, if we just went for the Hydro Cannon into the uh, Incineroar, that would have been ideal. Never mind, never mind. do prevent any parting shots coming out. And we still got a disguise intact. There's a muddy water, so we're not even gonna get an attack off with Prim. No. And uh, we are gonna lose our disguise. But I feel like we can get Titar in here and really make use of it to be honest. Um and we're not protected by I think we need to taunt the Melotic. Does it start to coil or does it just go for the max? That's the question. 
The opponent still got access to their max. Dynamax Pokemon, haven't they? Hmm. Because we could potentially just taunt. We could taunt the Melotic. Um. Just to prevent any. Like, it's definitely going to be a coil set, I think. That, that would be my best bet. We kind of want a Muddy Water to hit here. Because then our Rock Slide is going to do crazy amounts of damage. Okay, so the Incineroar switching out. Fine. Yeah, the Melotic gonna max. Okay. Where are you attacking into, though, if you're Melotic? If you go into Titar, I don't think a Max Geyser is gonna get us. Um. Yeah. And a Rock Slide will do a nice chunk of damage. Unless it's into the Mimikyu. Yeah. Yeah, but we do take that. Mm. That's not ideal. That is not ideal. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Hmm. Now we're totally pinned. Like... I don't really know what we could have done otherwise, like, we're kind of relying. My opponents played the smart move there and not attacked into our Tyranitar. Um. We need to taunt the Ferrothorn, potentially. Um. We need the Sand Up. But by doing that, we're gonna. There's, like. By getting the Sand Up, we are gonna. Basically, proc the competitive on the Milotic. So it's like, it's a bad turn at every point of this battle for us. We'll taunt the Ferrothorn, try and get around it that way. Um, we'll probably see Max Geyser into t -tail. That should proc our weakness policy. Wow, they're not even doing that. They're just going to go body press into t -tail, I think. Yeah, because they don't hide in. Oh no, it does go for the iron defense. Alright. Hmm. Uh, we're playing on the back foot completely here. Uh, yeah, we just... And then not, there is really very little we can do here. I think we have to... Like... You're kind of hoping... Well, there is nothing. There's nothing we can do here. Incineroar comes in. We're going to see Max Geyser. It's going to be into the Arcanine to get rid of it. So then Ferrothorn has the win con. But they don't really need it even at this point. Um, ah. You know, and like looking back already at this game, like you can see where we like went completely wrong. You know, like my opponent was way more patient with their, their Dynamax turns than we were. Um... And by doing that, it kind of puts them in a position. Well, you know, you never know, actually. We're there. Because... Depends how much... It, oh, no. A competitive boost of Muddy Water is 100% going to take down our T-Top. In the rain. But we can protect, okay? The problem is, like, is a... Because we've been intimidated, so a plus one... Superpower will not be enough to get Ferrothorn, and the body press will definitely get us. So whatever happens, there's a muddy water. Okay, All right. Oh, we can probably get the, we can probably get the Incineroar. If we get a weakness policy boost, survive. We can definitely get the Rock Slide here into Melotic. I just don't feel like we'll be able to take the boosted muddy water. Single target as well in the rain. It's not happening. <laughs> the fastest the fastest drop in bar in history of VGC. Okay, well, very good game to my opponent. They played that super well. Um, it kind of got us pinned into a position where we couldn't get ourselves out of. Uh, obviously, 
the Ferrothorn melotic combination we talked about at the start. Melotic, I obviously mentioned, not something that I prefer, like personally like, but you can see the use of it there and how good it is to kind of pin your opponent in. We, like we need the Arcanine really in that situation to deal with it because of how big of a threat it is. But by doing that, it really limits your ability to switch around the board as well because the Melotic on the board pretty much the whole time. You've got to be really conscious about when you're switching in the Arcanine to check the Ferrothorn and um, to kind of force the switch out whilst also being able to react to deal with the Melotic, which we just found extremely difficult. And maybe we could have brought something like Dusclops, uh, got our weakness policy propped on our Tyranitar, I don't know that it's a tricky, tricky matchup, that one. Um, and it just feels very clunky and hard to get around. So um, it's maybe how I've definitely probably how I've approached it. There's probably better ways to doing it. But I still feel like that combination is very tricky to get around without maybe a dedicated Pokemon to be able to get rid of the Melotic. Uh, maybe we used our own Ferrothorn. That would have been an idea to uh, probably give us a little bit more leverage there rather than relying on the Arcanine. We could have went for our body press, setting up our own Ferrothorn, especially with the rain from the Primarina. And thinking about it, that probably would have been the better way to go around it. But anyway, we'll be back later in the week with more battles from this team. Like I said earlier on in the episode, if you'd like to see me feature any of your teams, any ideas that you have, do drop them down below in the comment section and I will definitely have a look at those and try and get as many of them featured as possible. Um, but yeah, looking forward to Friday. Obviously, the new rules come in, so we'll have new content around the new G-Max Pokemon that were introduced, the, the Gengar, Machamp, and the Garbodor as soon as possible. Um, working on teams right now, so get excited for next week. Um, but for the remainder of this week, we will have uh, more just series 3 stuff so thanks for tuning in friends have a good one and i'll see you all for the next one till then bye bye